ozonolysis of alkynes. That's going to be the topic of this lesson, and we'll go back and start with a review of our ozonolysis of alkenes. We'll find out it's very similar. It's another sort of oxidative cleavage reaction, where instead of cleaving a carbon-carbon double bond, we're going to be cleaving a carbon-carbon triple bond instead. This lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one or any of my future playlists, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification, you'll be notified every time I release a new lesson. All right, so let's start this off by reviewing ozonolysis of alkenes. And you might recall that we are going to cleave our carbon-carbon double bond there. So and we have two options here, reducing conditions or oxidizing conditions. But in either case, you're going to replace that carbon-carbon double bond on both sides of the molecule with a carbon-oxygen double bond. So this carbon ends up with the double bond oxygen. This one ends up with the double bond oxygen. In this case, we have a ketone. But in this case, this is an aldehyde where we often draw that hydrogen in. And under reducing conditions, where in step two, you either use dimethyl sulfide or zinc and water. So that's your product. So, however, we also have the option in with alkenes of doing this under oxidizing conditions, where in step two, we use a mild oxidizing agent, hydrogen peroxide, instead. And the only difference, ketone is going to be a ketone no matter what. So we still get this product, but aldehydes are oxidizable, we'll learn next semester, to carboxylic acids. And so under oxidizing conditions, any aldehydes that you might have produced end up as carboxylic acids, and that's the case. Well, with alkynes, it turns out that second step is going to be a little bit different. We only ever do ozonolysis, it turns out, for an alkyne under oxidizing conditions. But it's not peroxide. We just use water. It's all that's necessary here. But it is the same overall process in predicting your products. Instead of cleaving a carbon-carbon double bond, you're going to cleave a carbon-carbon triple bond. And you are never going to get a ketone. You're never going to get an aldehyde. You're going to get carboxylic acids largely. And so we'll look at this in two contexts. We'll start with an internal alkyne. So cleave your carbon-carbon triple bond, and this carbon and this carbon are both going to be a carbon of carboxylic acids in the product. And so in one case, the left-hand side, we're going to have two carbon carboxylic acid. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have a one, two, three, four carbon carboxylic acid. And there's your two products. That's how we predict it. All right, what happens when you have a terminal alkyne, though? It's going to be a little bit different. So once again, we're still going to cleave that carbon-carbon triple bond. So, And both of these carbons initially are going to turn into carboxylic acids. So on the left-hand side of this one, we have one, two, three, four carbon carboxylic acid. But on the other side, we have that, just that one carbon. And a one carbon carboxylic acid looks like this. Turns out this is formic acid. And under these conditions, formic acid is not the most stable thing in the world and continues getting oxidized one step further till it turns into carbon dioxide. And so formic acid is not one of our products. We predict carbon dioxide instead. And that's the case with the terminal alkyne. For that terminal alkyne, instead of getting two carboxylic acids, you get one carboxylic acid and then carbon dioxide. If you have found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? A couple of the most helpful things you can do to help promote the channel. If you've got questions on the ozonolysis of alkynes, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you're looking for the study guide that goes with these lessons, or for practice problems, or for my brand new final exam rapid review for OCHEM 1, uh, they're all included as part of my premium course on chadsprep.com.